Now we will install TypeScript and use a REPL to solve our first problems with TypeScript code. First you need to install Node.js as a prerequisite. Just navigate to nodejs.org, download and install the latest LTS version of Node.js. Alternatively, you can use the package manager of your choice to install Node on your system. Node comes with the Node package manager command line tool that lets you install all kinds of tools, frameworks and libraries related to Node development. We'll use npm now to install TypeScript. Type npm install minus g for globally TypeScript and hit enter. Now when that's finished, I want you also to install tsnode. tsnode is a handy tool that lets you transpile and execute TypeScript files with just one command. Also, tsnode provides a REPL. To start the REPL, just type tsnode without any further parameters. REPL stands for Redevelop Print Loop, so the REPL will read whatever we type in, which should be TypeScript code. It will evaluate that code, it will print the answer to the screen, and then it will start over again. This REPL comes in handy when you want to try out some stuff live before even putting it into your program. Also with the REPL you can use TypeScript like a powerful calculator. For basic mathematical calculations, TypeScript provides several operators. We have plus and minus for addition and subtraction. We have star and uh, slash for multiplication and division. We have the percentage sign for modulo. And we have double star for power or exponential operator, like this. Operators have priorities in TypeScript. So the addition and subtraction operators have less priority than multiplication and division, which themselves have less priority than the power operator. To enforce prior execution of lesser priority operators, you can use brackets. You can try it with the following example. 2 multiplied by 3 by the power of 3. All right, this is the same as writing this. Now, if we want the multiplication to happen first, we have to put it into brackets, just like this. So let's check out the first exercise. A car drives 54 miles in two hours. Use TypeScript as your calculator to check the average velocity of that car. That's pretty simple. We just divide 54 by two and we get the result. Second exercise, use TypeScript to calculate the cosine of 42 in radians. Let's try cos 42. That didn't work out. Let's try cosine of 42. Mm, not good neither. This results in an error because we're not using the correct functions. However, TypeScript comes with a lot of functionality, but we have to find out how to access it. For this, we can use Google or any other search engine of your choice to search TypeScript cosine. You will find something like this. Often, you will land on JavaScript resources even if you search for TypeScript. This is okay because TypeScript is transpiled to JavaScript in the end, so you can use all the JavaScript functionality also in TypeScript. So we found out that TypeScript has a cosine function inside the math object. To use the cosine function, we type math, the object name, dot, and the function name, which is cos. Let's try that. math.cos42. And that's that. So in the third exercise, we are asked to calculate the arcus cosine of 0.42 radians. So why don't you check out the documentation and get back to this video when you did? All right, so I hope you found out that the Arcus cosine function also resides in a math object and can be accessed like math.acos.42, which concludes this exercise. For the last exercise, we're going to implement a formula that calculates the degrees in Celsius given degrees in Fahrenheit. You can use this formula. Degrees in Fahrenheit equals degrees in Celsius multiplied by 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Let's implement that. 
and try it with 20 degrees in Celsius. Multiply by 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Note that you can erase these brackets because multiplication and division have anyways a higher priority than addition. The result is the same. Let's try this also with 30 degrees and 40 degrees. And now comes the bonus. The formula for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit is simple, but it would still be nice to have a function in TypeScript that encapsulates this logic. Also, I guess that in your career you will write functions that are much more complex than this one, and you would like to encapsulate their logic and hide it behind a simple function name. Luckily, we can do exactly that. We will discuss more about functions later in the book, but for now I'm going to show you how to implement a simple function that converts Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can define a new function by using the function keyword, just like this, followed by the name of a function. Let's give it Celsius to Fahrenheit. And then in brackets you can define the parameters that the function is going to take. So we have just one parameter and we call it degrees Celsius. And we tell TypeScript that this is actually a number. So if you try to use that function with anything but a number, you will get an error, which is good. Then we use these curly braces here to tell TypeScript that whatever is between those curly braces is the body of the function. It was actually being executed when you call the function. So the body of the function should be our formula. So degrees Celsius multiplied by 9 divided by 5 plus 32. And with this value that is calculated here, what do we want to do? Well, we want to return it. So the function returns the result of this calculation. And we have to properly end this here. So let's copy and paste this function right into our REPL. And we did not get any error message, which means our syntax is correct. So let's try to call the function Celsius to Fahrenheit of 20 degrees. Well, seems correct. 30 degrees, 40 degrees. So we can call this function as if it was any other function in TypeScript. Do you see how easy it is to call it with different parameters? No more need to find the exact location where we want to change the degree Celsius parameter, right? If you call the function with, for example, a text, ABC, you will get an error message. So you can even have TypeScript check the validity of what you write. That's nice, right? So that concludes this video. I hope you learned something. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. See you later and happy coding.